When it comes to working from home, I want to ensure that I have a workspace that I feel comfortable to work from and that can also accommodate the different things that I need to be able to do the tasks at hand, such as making these videos. So let's take a closer look at my desk and working setup. I've likely individually reviewed a lot of the products that I'm using in my setup, so I will leave links in the description if you want to learn more about a specific product. Before I talk about what's on the desk, let's talk about the desk itself. Around a year or so ago, I moved from a sitting desk to a sit-stand desk, and I've really enjoyed the flexibility that it brings. This desk is from a company called GoStand and features motors in both legs which quietly raise and lower the desk. I chose to go with a white and black design for the desk, and the white tabletop keeps things bright and hides any dust that may settle before I have a chance to wipe down the desk, and the black legs blend underneath the desk and hide dirt that may come from my shoes. To keep things organised, I added a cable management tray underneath the desk, and this allows me to keep all the wires tidy and hidden away, so I only have a few visible cables going from my computer and plug sockets, as I also have an Anker USB hub stored away in there. Regardless of what kind of desk you use, I'd highly recommend picking up a cable management tray, as I found getting the cables up off the ground gives you a lot more floor space. Around the back of the desk, I have a LifeX LED strip that adds some backlighting to the desk throughout the day, and I can change the colour of the strip using the LifeX app on my phone or computer. If you're on a budget, I've previously used an IKEA Malm desk, which worked very nicely for a number of years, and has now been repurposed somewhere else in the house. Of course, when I'm not standing up, I'll be sitting, and my chair of choice is the Herman Miller Aeron, which is great for ergonomics and sitting in all day. I also like the mesh design of the chair, which means that it is breathable and still comfortable to sit in throughout summer, where it tends to be a little hotter. The Aeron chair is quite pricey, but if you look at the used market, you can get a good price for one. As far as audio goes, I have a microphone and speaker setup for recording voiceovers and listening to music when working. The Rode Complete Studio Kit has been my latest choice for a microphone and audio interface, and I'm very happy with how the microphone performs, providing high quality vocal recordings. The audio interface is used to connect the microphone to my computer, but I also have my Mackie CR3 speakers plugged into the audio interface, so I have my audio in and out running from one device. The Mackie CR3 speakers are a good choice for monitor speakers on a budget, although I do believe that they have been replaced with a slightly newer model at this point. The speakers sit on Kanto S2W speaker stands, which blend in with the desk and isolate the speakers, so they don't pass any significant vibrations through the tabletop. The speakers still provide a good quality sound, and I don't see myself upgrading these anytime soon. They still get the job done, and their flatter frequency response makes them great for editing these videos, so I know how my content truly sounds. My only complaint with the speakers is their channel orientation switch on the back, which can become a little faulty and require some WD-40 to work properly which I did mention in my initial review a few years ago. This can be fixed permanently by taking apart the speakers and soldering a wire instead of using a switch, but I haven't done that yet. I'm a big fan of dual screen setups as it allows me to have multiple things open at the same time without having to worry about sorting between windows and applications. I can have exactly what I need open in their own individual spaces. My main display is a BenQ PD2700U, which I chose for its 4K resolution and 100% sRGB colour coverage. These specifications are fantastic for editing videos and photos, as I am dealing with high resolution media, usually 4K video and 30 megapixel photos. This display is incredibly sharp, and it has some handy software features that allow you to tweak the display settings and colour profiles from directly within Windows. This is a nice feature to have, as monitor menus aren't the nicest to browse. My secondary display is a Samsung monitor. There's nothing too special about this monitor as it has fairly average colour performance and a 1080p resolution, but it does what I need it to do as a secondary display and an area for me to have more information visible at a glance. Both displays are 27 inches, which I find is a nice balance between visible size and space consumed on my desk, and to free up a bit more space on the desk, I have these monitors mounted on arms, which feature some handy cable channeling to keep things tidy. When it comes to peripherals, I've been very happy with the Logitech MX line of products. My keyboard of choice is the Logitech MX Keys, which I switched to from a mechanical keyboard. I find the design of the keyboard to be comfortable for typing on, and it makes writing scripts pleasant to do. My mouse is the MX Master 2S, which also works nicely. The design of the Master 2S is great for regular daily use, as the shape of the mouse is more ergonomic in comparison to computer mice that I've previously used. I then use the mouse on an Asus cloth mouse pad, which allows the mouse to glide smoothly across the surface and it also keeps things quiet. 
Both of my Logitech peripherals are connected using the USB unifying receiver, as I do find it offers better battery life than using a Bluetooth connection. On the top of my monitors, I also have a couple of accessories. On my primary monitor, I have the BenQ screen bar, which is an on-monitor desk lamp. The screen bar is great in the winter when it gets early, as it gets quite dark in the afternoon and keeps my workspace bright and well lit. On my secondary monitor, I have the Microsoft LiveCam webcam for the occasional video call. If I'm gaming, there may also be an Xbox One controller sat around for playing Forza or any other games that involve driving around, and I also have some Soundcore Q35 headphones off to the side if I wish to use headphones, but most of the time I use the Mackie speakers. That's been a look at the different tech that I use on a daily basis to make and write videos. Hopefully it was insightful if you're looking to add some things to your setup, and is there anything that you think I'm missing? Let me know. That's all for this video. If you've enjoyed watching, give the video a like, and if you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing by clicking that button below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.